Hey guys, Mud Skipper Mud Motors here. Today we are going to do a point by point comparison of these two surface drives that we sell. When we go over them in detail, you guys can see for yourselves which is the better product. These are both surface drives that we currently offer. Both of them are mounted to a seven horsepower electric start gasoline engine. This model is the Mudskipper 7 horsepower Featherlight surface drive. It is $849. That is just for the surface drive frame. The electric start gasoline engine is another $219. Um, you don't have to use our engine. You can buy a Harbor Freight Predator engine uh, for about $150 online. And this model over here is our older style SE200. It also fits five to seven horsepower engines. Uh, this model here retails for $7.99, again, just for the surface drive frame, and the engine is an additional $219, uh, and like the other model, you can, you can put the Predator engine on it. The SC200 frame weighs 75 pounds. The engine itself weighs an additional 42 pounds. This is a chain-driven uh, surface drive. Um, the Feather light over here, however, is aluminum. Um, this kit weighs 46 pounds, and again, with the engine, another 42. So you can see uh, the significant weight difference between the two, with the Feather light being a lot lighter uh, body. The SC200 comes with aluminum propellers, whereas the Feather light comes with a nice 8 inch stainless steel propeller. I want to be very careful with these props, they're extremely sharp. The SE200 is a steel uh, surface drive frame. It is painted and it is stick welded. Whereas the Featherlight over here, you can see it is a kind of a cleaner, smaller body. Uh, it is aluminum, it's powder coated, and it has been MIG welded. On the SE200, um, this is a greaseless tail shaft. This bushing down at the end here, the prop bushing, is made out of a type of wood. Um, you cannot grease inside the shaft. Whereas on the Featherlight kit, it uses sealed roller bearings inside the tail housing here. As you can see, a Zerk fitting uh, down here to easily lubricate the inside components of the shaft. The SC200 has a unique uh, tiller handle. Uh, first and foremost, this diameter here is, uh, I think, about a one and an eighth inch. This is the only uh, throttle lever we can get to connect to this. So it, is, it is, does come with the kit, but it's the only one that we have. Um, it is a straight shaft all the way down, and there are two bolts here that tighten down the two pieces together. With this shipping in one box, uh, the tiller handle is broken down into two pieces, but it is a straight, uh, uniform shaft. The seven horsepower feather light tiller handle has this ergonomic bend, which we often call a, a Z-shaped bend handle. Um, it is one piece, one solid length, and it is also aluminum. And by default, it comes with this um, all metal um, throttle control lever. The SE200 uses all steel, uh, mild steel uh, fittings and fasteners to tighten everything down. The Featherlight, however, uses all stainless steel bolts throughout. Even the shaft that runs down the center of the tail assembly is all stainless steel. The SC200 is only right-hand steering. Um, you can't move the tiller handle over to the left side. There's this red uh, plastic carrying handle on this side, but it is right-hand only. The Featherlight has a right-hand and left-hand uh, ring option, so you can undo the bolts move the entire tiller to the other side. The SC200 uses a brass propeller nut, which is just simply threaded on there with a lock washer. And the seven horsepower Featherlight uses a stainless steel nylon locking nut, also with a lock washer. Part of the overall weight savings between the two models is that the SC200 uses a triple roller chain uh, and is therefore uh, quite a bit louder the seven horsepower light, however, uses a synchronous belt, so it is therefore a bit quieter. There are several ways to adjust the SE200 on your boat. To raise and lower the kit, you'll see these two uh, zinc-plated bolts here. 
you need to physically remove the surface drive from the transom mount and then change the height at which it sits. So the lower, obviously, uh, the deeper your propeller would go. You're not gonna wanna do that on the water. Uh, definitely complicated and difficult. The transom post here is held on by one uh, regular nut with a washer. And then if you wanted to actually adjust the trim as you're driving, there is a trim transom post underneath here which turns, uh, you're gonna wanna get underneath there and, and turn it either with a wrench or by hand on that. Uh, I also don't recommend doing it while you're driving, but you can do it from within the boat. To change the trim adjustment of the feather light, you simply just turn this dial in and out, uh, which changes the height of the propeller. You can do that while you're driving uh, from within the boat. You, you really barely even have to turn around uh, just to reach behind you and, and change the trim by adjusting this. It's quite simple. If you look on the back side of the surface drive, the transom post bushing is held on also by a lock nut. The transom mount itself, uh, both models are fairly simple. This kit here, uh, the SC200, you tighten down and loosen uh, just by turning these wing bolts and you'll see that there are two uh, cups that uh, tighten down right onto the transom of the boat. The feather light uses three stainless hex nuts. You would need obviously a wrench to tighten those down at first application. Uh, that will hold this transom mount on nicely and also you'll notice the rib reinforcement that's welded on here for this model. Transom mount is fairly narrow and there's also a cutaway here. This cutaway is for if you have a, a welded center line uh, support beam in the in your boat, uh, then this, this surface drive will mount to that easily, taking that into consideration. The tiller handle on the SC200 is uh, bare metal, which gets maybe a little cold on the on the hands. On the feather light, uh, we've got a nice uh, rubberized grip. It feels much nicer to the hand. Moving back to the transom pivot post on the SC200 again. There's a metal rod which goes down between these components and it just sits inside of this housing and this housing and again is tightened up by the standard nut. The feather light, however, uh, has a brass sleeve. The, the top piece here is actually brass and it's sleeved down through the length of the transom mount which makes turning uh, a lot more smoother. The SC200 has an inspection cover that is held on by six bolts. Those six bolts need to be removed. You can only access the top uh, portion of the chain from there. The feather light, however, has three different inspection ports. Uh, middle one here, upper here, and there's a lower inspection port around the back. There, you can check out the lower sprocket. There is no uh, drain plug on the lower portion of the tail on the SC200. And on the feather light surface drive, there is a drain plug here. And what you would do for maintenance is pump marine grease down through this fitting here until the old, all the old grease comes out of this and fill it up with new grease and then put the screw back in. The SC200 has a tail that, that does come fully out of the body of the surface drive. It's tightened down by these two bolts here with standard hex nuts. Um, there is some opportunity possibly for the tail to uh, move, the fin to move if you hit something solid, just to swing a little bit, potentially. The feather light surface drive tail is fully attached to the lower portion of the surface drive. There's nothing to spin or move on this kit. You also notice that there's a brace which comes fully down from the body, right the way down, uh, connects to the tail. On the SC200, the brace only goes down to the power takeoff. It doesn't connect to the tail in any way. The SC200 has a partial skeg, which will keep you off of rocks and, and logs. The feather light surface drive has a full skeg that starts right up from the body of the, of the unit itself and runs all the way down. And that's gonna offer more protection to the propeller. One of the more interesting things to consider between these two units is the way the propeller actually moves on the back of the boat, which makes steering easy. If you notice when you turn the SC200, you can really notice that the propeller sort of almost rises there as you turn. Uh, it comes in, a, in almost a sweeping arc motion like that. The propeller doesn't stay straight. You move over to the seven horsepower feather lights, and you look at the propeller there, you'll notice that it stays stationary at the exact same depth no matter where you turn. To summarize, 
The two surface drives do have a slightly different warranty. The warranty on the seven horsepower feather light surface drive is a limited three year warranty on uh, fabrication details, the actual frame itself, the aluminum and the welding, uh, three years. And then, then moving parts like the belt um, is one year. The SE 200 has a uh, one year limited warranty as well. Uh, overall construction between the two kits um, our technician assembled these both this morning. They're both fairly easy to put together with the Featherlight surface drive taking about 40 minutes to assemble and the SE200 taking about an hour and a half to assemble.